welcome to another installment of Vintage Migo. This week our subject are the Micronaut Aliens. This is about just all about the first series, and they, to me, are some of the coolest action figures Migo ever made. Also, on a personal note, they're a really special memory to me. They kind of killed Santa Claus. Um, you see, at the Christmas of 1979, these were all I could think about, and I'll get into why. Um, but these figures and their respective vehicles were at the top of my Christmas wish list that year. And unfortunately, when I was walking to use my parents' uh, bathroom, I noticed in my mom's closet there was a big white Eaton's bag. And, of course, white doesn't cover up the black of the Micronauts packaging. And I could see Repto, Antron, and Membros through that bag. And I remember thinking, like, I was pushing nine, so I probably didn't really believe in Santa anymore. But also, I think the realization my mom was really bad at hiding things came into light. And, you know, I spoiled a lot of surprises by taking little visits to her bedroom closet. The Micronauts Aliens came out in 1979, and they're significant because they are the first designs that really didn't follow any sort of Japanese heritage. These are original creations. I believe the collaboration on the characters came between Migo's R&D department and a company called Cal R&D, who was the company that introduced the Takara Microman line to Migo in the first place. Prior to that, the Micronaut toys on the marketplace were just retooled versions of Takara designs. The figures themselves do have the O-ring construction, similar articulation, and the 5mm port system that they share with their Micronaut brothers. However, the characters do have some radically different designs. First of all, and probably the most important thing is, they all have glow-in-the-dark glow brains. brains. Secondly, instead of hands, they all have interchangeable weapons which is something that was pretty cool about the Micronauts to begin with, was the interchangeable world. The first wave included three characters. Repto, half-man, half-reptile from the distant planet of Soria. Antron, the sixth-limb invader from the faraway galaxy of Thoraxid. And Membros, the slithery-skinned invader from the remote world of Visceros. Migo took a lot of care and preparation in this line. Instead of using the standard Micronauts packaging, they enlisted legendary album painter Ken Kelly to create new packaging art that would stand out from the traditional Micronauts line. Kelly told me in an interview that he was instructed to make each character look 10 feet tall, and he really does. This is some of the most striking artwork you'll ever see on a toy package, and it also extended to the vehicles. So in 1979, Ken Kelly also painted the box artwork for the Hornetroid and Terrafant vehicles that were to accompany the aliens. Migo also put together a pretty great marketing campaign. The Micronaut aliens would be seen in comic book ads and, of course, on television. And let's take a look at the TV. They glow in the dark. Lights on! Alien creatures with brains that glow in the dark, each sold separately. Repto, half-reptile. Antron with four arms. Membros, the brain. New alien creatures include Centaurus, the warhorse. Kronos, the winged warrior. Lobros from the undersea planet. Turn out the lights. They glow in the dark. Centaurus, Kronos, Lobros, and all other alien creatures are sold separately by Miko. So, according to my friend uh, Ray Miller, a.k.a. Acro Ray, who is much more knowledgeable on the subject than me, the Micronaut aliens, especially the first series, came from Cal R&D, Migo asked Kyle R&D to create some more Western-style toys for the Micronauts line. And these were designed by a man by the name of Stephen Lee, who would later develop some of the earliest uh, Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys and robotic vehicles for the Exo Squad line, also by Playmates. So he had his hands in a lot of things. You can see in this early shot that was provided to me by Ray 
it, that the original Hornetroid concept also had a glow in the dark brain. And I believe there is more to it. There were some play sets and other things that were developed that also kind of incorporated that glow in the dark brain. Hornetroid did not have a brain, neither did Terrafant, but I kind of loved the idea that they were trying to spread that out. The characters would make their way to the celebrated Marvel Micronauts comic book as well. I remember as a kid being a little disappointed in it because they just made them armies of kind of mindless uh, pawns of another character. Whereas in my world, I really viewed them as having distinct personalities. These were my bad guys that I used in Star Wars fights along with the Micronauts. These, In my head as a kid, these guys were major villains, not somebody's goons or lackeys. They were the big boss you fought at the end. And they, you know, they gave Luke Skywalker and the crew of the Palomino and Enterprise a, a real run for their money. The aliens were sold internationally as well. They were picked up in Canada by Grand Toys, in France by Pin Pin, and in Italy where the Micronauts were extremely popular by a company called G.I.G., I'm not 100% if they were released with the Airfix logo in the UK or Germany, but they did get kind of a worldwide release. These figures proved very popular, and did. there was a second series, which I'll get into in another video. A curious thing happened around the early 1980s when Mego was kind of going through rough times. Figures of Antron, Repto, and Membro started showing up on these weird lion rock cards the most curious thing about them is they do not have any of their accessories this is a real factory closeout special and there is a lot of weird oddball migo stuff that came out around that time and we've we've covered some of it in our videos but there's you know mad monsters made a reappearance uh, there's aquaman on superman cards it's just total chaos and the micronauts got swept up in that the Micronaut alien molds were retooled in the early 1980s by a company called Phoenix Pack Toys, who actually owned Mego for a brief time, into a toy line called Lords of Light. We've done a video on the Plaid Stallion side of things on that, and I will include a link. Antron, Repto, and Membros had body parts and pieces reused for this line of glowing action figures. Unfortunately, just as the series launched, Phoenix Pack went through legal troubles themselves, and the basically one wave of figures got released. It's a real shame. In 2002, Palisades Toys reissued the Micronauts brand, including Membros and Repto, in various colors and different formats, adding things like hands for Membros. Unfortunately, it was plagued with production problems. These guys got some really brittle plastic coming to them, and I think they got a raw deal. So unfortunately, the Micronauts' return was very brief and ended in 2003. Nowadays, Hasbro owns all of these characters, and there is a lot of talk of movies, an interconnected universe with G.I. Joe and Transformers and Mask and Visionaries and whatever else they own. So we may one day see Membros, Antron, and Repto reappear, maybe on the big screen. Hopefully we'll be able to recognize them. Did you have the Micronaut aliens as a kid? What was your favorite? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter, at Mega Museum. Please check out our Facebook page and Facebook group, Megomania, and let's have a conversation. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.